Hello. <laughs> I'm Isabel. I'm Pierce. Hello. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, so today um, we decided to do video. You think I should zoom this in? You could. Is that what you're saying? Is How do we zoom this in? Do I have to stop it first? Yeah. All right, well, fuck it. We're just going to do it like this for us today. We're learning. Yeah. Um, yeah, welcome back to our podcast. This is the second episode. Second now. episode. And this is the first YouTube episode because now we decided we might as well set the camera up. Yeah. And talk into the phone. Yeah. While we're talking to the mic. Right. So then, a little combination. Right. We're advanced. We're growing. We are growing. We're growing. So, um, the topic... Day. Today's topic is that life is a game. Life is a game. That everything's a game. Everything is a game. It's a big fucking game. It's a huge game. What There's... game? The game. Oh, oh. many. <laughs> Sorry, guys. My my little dog wanted to come up here, he in and he head. fucking smacked his head on the. <laughs> Are you okay, buddy? My little fat head dog um, wanted to come up here, <laughs> and he hit his little fat head on the coffee table while he's trying to jump up. For those on YouTube, you can see how fucking adorable he is. Manny, come here. You guys want to see little Manny boy? Come here, baby. This is my doggy boy. This is Manny. He's no Frenchie. Manny. Manny, what's that? You follow him on Instagram. Yeah, it's uh, it's underscore Manny boy. Yeah. But um, and those of you on the podcast, if you watch the YouTube episode, you'll see a picture of him. Or on Instagram, this is Manny boy. You'll probably see pictures of him on my fitness stuff too. So, anyways, before poor little guy hit his little fat head, um, talking about life's a game. Yes. So, what does that mean? Why do we pick this topic? You know why? Why? So, a lot of, I think it comes to, like, when anyone is trying to, like, do anything in general, like, any goals they have, it's just, you have to just be okay with the fact that there are levels to beat there are ways to do it there are strategies and there isn't a structure necessarily but understanding every single concept around what you're what goal you're trying to attack is really important and that's where the game comes in is like understanding the design of the game Every game is different. Every game is... So let's let's do this. For people who are... You're listening and you're like, what the fuck are they talking about? Life is a game. So like, let's talk about all the different games. Let's, let's name the different games. So there's a money game. So when you want to make money, see it as a game. It's a fucking game. It's easy. There's it's easy. There's levels. There are levels. There's the relationship game, the dating game. Da yeah. we've been talking a lot about that we'll do an episode specifically on like attraction and, and the little game the little game the little flirting game that you play like yeah. men and women play um or men play or women play right whatever when you're playing the the romance game yeah the flirting game right the fitness game fitness getting in shape game. is a game yes you go and you press the buttons you lift the weights pressing the buttons and you go and you eat, you press different buttons, and you level up, and all of a sudden leveling up is your body changing. So there's the mm -hmm. fitness game. Everything is a game. If you want to learn Spanish, see Spanish it, see it a as a game. Everything is a game. It's all, it's all games. So that's why today's episode is about a game. So why, why, where is this coming from? I always like to say, why, why did we pick this episode? Why are we talking about this? So Isabel asked me what I want to talk about today, because the other day, yesterday, she... I asked her what she what topic was close to her, mm -hmm. and so this this episode comes about that I realized uh, when we were at that festival, lightning in a bottle, that everything is a game. Yeah. That like, uh, you know, in my altered states of consciousness, I just had this awakened moment, this enlightenment that, dude, we are just playing a fucking game. This is really the Matrix. It's really a video game. Anything you want to do, you want to be. Anything you want to have, you just have to play the game and then and level up lazy, to get there. If you're lazy, you're just going to lose. Yeah. There's no, oh, like, there's no shortcuts, really. There are. There are tricks and shortcuts, but 
there are some things that people think are shortcuts that aren't shortcuts. It's kind of like when you're wandering around in a quest in a video game and then you come to like this secret passageway and it says, um, come through, we have tea and crumpets and then you, <laughs> and then you fucking walk through and there's a pit and you die. Like that's you being lazy in this real life game. Like the more laziness you have and you think that's the easiest route, like the door's right there, the more you're just gonna like lose and keep dying. There is an easy way, but it's not necessarily visually right in front of your face. You have to actually tap into your inner self to figure out those easy tricks. You can't just be like, oh, I'm walking around and then there's like the door and then like you fucking go through the door and there's a pit in the floor. Like there is more like observe your surroundings, understand all the elements and then you'll see the secret passageway like this. So, and so that's let's, how use, it works. let's use a specific, let's pick one game and then, so what game do you think you're really good at? in life already and then tell me like what a secret passage would be or like you know what I mean in other, in other words use a real world example for like playing the game I'm good at seeing the whole perspective like any outcome any outcome of something that's occurring so let's say it's dating or um even work related like knowing what will be to come I could see what the possibilities are so that's my that's what I'm good at and like the game to, the game with that is really just like do you see everything that's gonna happen and then when you see everything that's gonna happen are you able to decide which pathway you want to go towards and then you pick the pathway and then you adjust and you keep doing that over and over and over again until you get to your goal. So that's what I'm good at. Like seeing different, all the different options. Yeah. Okay. And then seeing what the best route to take to get to that. Yeah. That's what, that's what the game that you're good at is. Yeah. The best so, route. So what would be like a cheat code then? Or like you're, you know what I mean? You're like, there are secrets. So what would be like a secret for that? So, in other words, let's say someone's trying to get a job, okay, and you're able to see all the pathways, and that's your strength. Yeah, you're able to see all the pathways to get to the job, or to get the job. So, I'm able to see like what they're actually trying, like what they're gonna be doing in the future, anyways. Like they have all these pathways that they're trying to do at once, and they don't know what they want to do, but like. If you really get to know somebody and you understand them enough, you'll know exactly which pathway they're going to go after in the future, whether it's now or later. Okay. So let's say someone's getting a job and they want, or they want to get a job and they're looking into fucking being a graphic designer or a fashion designer or, um, or textile, which is fabric designer. And you sit down and you talk with them and then you realize the one thing that they're really into is fashion design. And all the other things are just like fog that's affecting their vision. And it's just stuff that they enjoy doing, but they aren't going to actually attack and pursue because it's just for fun and it's on the side here and there. But the thing that they truly love is fashion design, but they're not gonna do it. And usually it's the thing, the one thing that someone's good at and they're gonna go after is the thing they're scared of. You think so? Yeah. Mm. Fear is the- or Is that for everyone or you think that's for you? I think it's for everyone. Mm, I think it's for you. Really? Because I don't 
feel that way. Like, if there's, like, a little bit of fear behind it, like, for me, there's a difference between fear and and your subconscious telling you something. So, your gut versus fear. We talked about this before, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Gut is calm. Like, okay, this isn't for me. Fear is scared like there's a little piece of you that's afraid and when you're and when there's fear involved if there's ever fear involved it means that you're just scared to pass that or take that jump and that leap of faith but if it's your gut and you're calm about it you're like no that's not for me kind of like a chef saying like i don't want to go be a contractor obviously because it's your gut like really like it's not something you would want to do but yeah i think if there's fear behind it i think that it's just telling you hey like you're scared to do it you don't you don't believe in yourself enough to do it but you know you want to do it so there's a difference between i see so yeah i guess what comes to mind for me is i always say that there is a difference between being scared and excited And then being scared and nervous. Like, well, scared and excited to me is, like, a very good sign. Because it's like, fuck, I'm really, like, I'm going to go skydiving. I'm really excited about this. I know it's going to be awesome, but I'm kind of, I'm scared shitless to jump out of a plane. Yeah. And then scared and nervous, or fearful, or instead of fearful, or scared, we'll say the word fearful. So fearful, if you're fearful and you're excited, I feel like that's a fucking great sign. Because that's like the skydiving. I'm fearful to jump out of the plane, but I'm really excited because I know it's going to be great. But then the other part of it is like fearful and nervous because you're like, frick, I'm fearful that like something bad is going to happen and this situation, this place is making me nervous. That's more like what you're saying about your gut. Yeah. That's your gut being like, yo, this is, Yeah. you so got to listen, that's probably not good. I guess good. there's different types of fear then that we should observe that. Okay, that's interesting. I've never thought of it like that. So what? why would you say that? What kind of different fears are there? There is fear, like you just said. There's fear nervous. There's fear excited. And then there's fear... What was the third one? Uh, I, I only had the two. Okay. So, so there's fear nervous. And then there's fear excited. When you have fear nerves, and it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like your fight or flight kicks in. And you're not about to do that and that's not a good idea then obviously it's your gut saying like don't do that but if it's like your fear excitement and you're scared of doing something but it looks so exciting and it looks intimidating then it's like you know you want to fucking do that yeah you're not doing it because you're intimidated and you have this fear behind that yeah and I guess the I guess the challenge is identifying which one it is that and you're like moving challenge. forward and you're like oh man am I you know what I mean because when you're feeling that emotion you're all like you know wired up with fear you're like oh shit yeah and like what's you know that so is a challenge. I wonder how how do you think you identify that I think <sighs> really it's just about knowing the difference between like within yourself nervousness and reality like, what, is it really that scary? Like, is it really that scary? Like, you have to question yourself. I'm a huge questioner. Like, question everything. So, question, why do you fear that? Like, what's so scary? Like, what is it that's scaring you? If it's, is it scaring you because you don't think you can do it? Then that's obviously you telling yourself that you can't do it. Hold is on. it scaring you? Because... Come here, buddy. Over here. Oh, Manny wants Manny to Manny wants up. to jump up. Come over here. My dog yeah. wants to jump up again. I don't want to hit, have him hit his head. Here. Come up here. Up. 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 Good boy. There we go. He was getting ready to jump and smack his little fat head on the table. So I didn't want him to do that. Huh. Huh, Manny. Manny's not fearful. No. Dude, did you get a bump on your head? Aw, did he? No, he's okay. okay. Gotta take care of the little guy little guy Manny boy so yeah okay so then talking about the game of life these different games there's a trick one of those is a trick the trick is like 
the shortcut is, are you going to jump over the fence that you're in fear of? Or are you going to stay in your little, like, comfortable, like, cozy home that you're just, like, so used to and just chilling? Like, are you going to go to the next level and see what's behind the fence? Or are you going to sit in where you are already? Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like when it comes to as far as like why I see, I guess bringing it back to like the game, I think the biggest breakthrough for me realizing it's a game is to have fun with everything Mm -hmm. and to not take it so seriously. Yeah. Everything. And it's funny because that's what came up. Um, I'm in this course called a PTBI. It stands for Personal Trainer Business Incubator. And I signed up for the coaching program along with like the actual education and course because um, I run an online fitness coaching business. And so we have these group coaching calls. And today the group coaching call, um, it, it's a, it was a mindset coaching call. And there's probably like 10 people, 12 people on the call or something like that. And we go around and kind of just share and talk about stuff. And then this came up because I was telling the group about how I had this breakthrough that everything's a game and this girl was like, man, I needed to hear that because I've been taking shit so serious. And I think that's the essence of at least what I want to share with this topic is that we take shit so serious and we grind so hard and we fall into these routines and like if you're married and you have kids and like work even more so, you just fall into this like monotony of life and you're just going through the fucking motions but there's no joy And so I guess the clarity, the epiphany for me again was that, dude, this is a game. It's all fucking fake. It's all like we just need to have fun going through life. So like your job, it shouldn't be a grind. Like it should. Yeah, it shouldn't be or whatever or whatever the fuck you do. Even if you don't work a nine to five, but you're like traveling, no matter what you do, basically, I think the breakthrough for me is that you should always go towards what makes you fucking happy and feel good. And if you don't, you're either taking shit too seriously or you're on the fucking wrong path and you shouldn't be doing it. Because in the end, I am now of the belief that nothing should ever be a struggle. You should never feel bad about anything. And if it, you do feel bad about anything, it's because you're on the wrong path or you're wrong, around the wrong people or you're in the wrong situations. And that's why you don't feel fucking good about it. Because now what I experienced, especially in these past couple weeks, but even before, is that everything really should be a flow. You should really enjoy what you're doing. You should really fucking enjoy the people you're around. You should enjoy the places you're going. And, like, if it doesn't feel right, don't fucking do it. And that's, like, your internal compass. And, like, I again, why this topic comes up, this shit is a game. You should have fun. Games are meant to be played, and they're meant to be enjoyed, and you're meant to have fun. And if you're not enjoying it... You're not enjoying then it. And you're not playing the right game. You're not playing the right game. You're playing the game that everyone else is telling you to play. Yeah, exactly. And fuck that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I play my own game. How, <laughs> I play my own game. I play my own game, and I have a grand old fucking time doing it. And I think that's like maybe a pearl of wisdom to drop on you guys that are listening or watching on YouTube is that... We're all born with this, and I'm stealing this from um, Abraham and Esther Hicks, um, and they have they wrote a book called uh, Ask and It Is Given, and it's funny because there's a little story about that. My mentor told me, my old spiritual mentor told me that I shouldn't be listening to her content or their content because I'm already vibrating at a higher level, but that's a different story for a different time. But I did look into some stuff, and it resonated with me, and one of the messages I took away that they shared was that, and this is a fucking beautiful message, We are all built with um, the most accurate, amazing, and simple GPS system to know if we're actually on the right path in our lives or not. And it's this simple. Doesn't make you feel good. So it goes back to what we're saying. Like, if you're in a fucking relationship, sure, there are challenges and there are things to overcome. But if it doesn't feel good in your gut, and you're like, fuck, this just doesn't feel good. Like, I'm not having fun, like, over and over and over, and you're banging your head against the wall. That's probably not the right relationship. Like, something's off. Something's off. And you're not trusting that gut part of yourself. And it's even, like, point zero, like, it's this teeny little fucking voice in the back of your head. Right. So small, but so powerful that you are just annoyed by it constantly. Yeah. In, in like, 
you know, everything in life is like two main things. It's like work and like relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have to work. That's what gives us our purpose. And I share this because I know that I'm, I've experienced it. I'm living it. The difference between the two when you're playing the right game and you're not playing the right game. We'll use it in the context of career and work. So, you know, before I decided to get back into personal training, I was waiting tables and I knew that obviously I'm not going to fucking wait tables forever. And if you're listening, there's nothing wrong. If you do do, yeah. do that and that's what you love to do and you're in the flow because the last restaurant I was at there, a lot of those people are career servers. That's what they do. And they make a shit ton of money and have a good time doing it. I knew for me, it wasn't, that's not what I'm meant for or wanted to do. So that feeling, that internal feeling of like, fuck, what's next, man? Like you knew this was a pit stop. You came here to establish yourself financially so you can make money, but it didn't feel right after the first five, six, even after the first like three, four months, I stopped hanging out with a lot of people that I worked with because I needed to get away from that energy so that I could have a clear mind and figure out what the fuck do I want to do for work. Yeah, and, and the people that surround you really affect that too. Oh, it's everything. It's everything. And that's, and that's something to talk about. Um, but, but as far as like your internal compass, your internal guidance system, does it feel good? Are you on the right path? I knew the restaurant was just paying the bills and it wasn't right. So I stepped away from that scene so I could be alone, get clarity. And then I knew immediately since I've already done this song and dance before, I was like, oh, I'm supposed to get back into fitness. Dude, when I train people and you, we've talked about this, it's, I don't, I am not working. I'm not fucking working. I'm hanging out with cool ass fucking people. And we're getting in shape and you, they, you feel and look amazing and I feel and look amazing and we just fucking have this awesome time. Never in my life have I trained a session where I felt like, I shouldn't say that, but um, fucking 99.9, never felt like work. So I know for a fact, this is what I, one of the things that I enjoy doing and I love doing, that's my internal compass. Work shouldn't feel like work and it doesn't feel like work to me. You know, it no, doesn't, it shouldn't. and it's the same thing with the podcast and my YouTube and shit. Like this is not work for me. No, you know? we're just talking. It's wonderful. We're just chatting. It's amazing. Chatting it out, shooting the shit. <laughs> everything you, and so everything you should do should feel good. It should feel easy. It should be enjoyable. Yeah. So if you're with a partner and it's always like, fuck man, we're always arguing or like whatever. If there's an argument that comes up and it's an opportunity to learn and grow, yeah, but if it's like the same if shit. If you're arguing 90% of the time. Yeah, you're not. Even, not even. Like, not even 90%. Like 30, maybe 20. Thirty percent to ninety percent, yeah. I well, and here's what I would say, and I'm obviously no relationship expert like, by get any the means. Fuck out of that relationship. Yeah, but like relationships, what I would say to me, this is what I picture in like you know a great relationship. It's like if there's something that comes up and there's a disagreement or a conflict of interest, and you're able to have a healthy discussion and come to an amicable resolution and understanding, Call even if you me. don't agree. Yeah, respectfully, lovingly, calmly, you know, and you grow from that experience and you learn to accept your partner even if you don't agree with it. Dude, that's beautiful. That's how it should be. But if it's like constantly like arguing like fuck you and then you rage and then, you know, avoid each other and sleep it off or whatever. Dude, and that's, that's the regular helpful. thing. That's not fucking good. That's probably not the right person. No. But if it's someone who's willing to have a healthy discussion about whatever issue comes up, that's a great partner to have because now you guys are growing together. So, like, that's the good feeling or the bad thing. Because that resolution is a fucking wonderful feeling. It's like, yes, oh my god, we both feel really good. Yeah, like, you have to be able to have a conversation with your significant other to the point where you're sitting down together and you're both feeding each other. Not feeding off each other where you're both deprived and, like, drained feeding each other it's 50 50 again yeah that's a 50 50 thing 50 50 dude everything yeah. is 50 50 if you're not feeling the 50 50 you have to call that shit out or you're call putting in out. like the 70 all the time and they're only putting in 30 you're like no this ain't fucking cool man like no it's not yeah. okay and it's definitely sure as hell not okay especially when you're in a very serious relationship and then also like even if you're just dating even if you're just Dating, fucking, yeah. having sex, or casual, whatever the fuck it is. 50-50, dude. 50-50 with every connection you have. With this no partnership, yeah. And if it's not like an easy flow, 
and like you feel like you're struggling and you're the one putting in even 55% consistently, that shit's fucked up. That's pro- that's the internal guidance system. It's probably not right. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like you got to have someone who's contributing as much as you are. We're like magnets. Like yeah. connections are magnets. If you have a strong magnet and then you have a weaker magnet, this one's 80% strength. This one is like fucking 20% strength. And then it just latches on. The bigger magnet is going to, is the, the smaller magnet is going to just be attached to the big one 24 fucking seven. Mm. But if you have two magnets that are 50, 50, you could separate it easily. So what about this though? As like far it's as it's calm, it's smooth. Yeah. It has that ability to separate. There is that flow. There's no, you know, oh, I'm fucking attached to this person because like he's putting in all this effort and I, and I don't have to do shit like that's not cool dude it's so funny because um i don't know shit about celebrities i i fucking am like so clueless about celebrities and relationships i don't know shit but it's funny we're talking about this because uh, my buddy um my old workout partner uh he his youtube is tau physique his fitness one but he started a second youtube um, and it's Tal Durden, like Tyler Durden from Fight Club, and it's about coaching women, or coaching guys about women and attraction and stuff. And it's funny because I watched one of his stories the other day, and like, so his thing is called the Love Club instead of Fight Club, right? Tal yeah. Durden Love Club, right? Instead of Tyler Durden Fight Club, right? So Fight that's Club. his play, yeah. But anyways, it's, it's cool. So, um, but he's got rules of love of the Love Club, right? Mm-hmm. And he, on his stories, I posted he was like, like I don't even know, I know who Michael B. Jordan is. I don't know what the fuck his girlfriend or fiance's name is. It doesn't matter to me. But anyways, he was like, uh, he had posted, he's like, why did uh, so-and-so, his wife or fiance, girlfriend's name say no to Michael B. Jordan proposing or something? I didn't fucking know and I don't, still don't know and don't really care. But anyways, he's like, what are the rules that Michael B. Jordan broke in the love club? Why didn't she say yes, right? Yeah. And so he was talking about it and he was like, "Here's here are the rules that he broke. He gave it to her too easy, man. He gave her the world on a platter and was not a challenge at all. Yeah. And she didn't want that. So he was doing like 70, 80, 90%. Wow. And she only did 10. And she's like, well, what the fuck? Like, this isn't what I want. And so it was like a 50-50 thing. Yeah. So she knew, even though, you know, in, in his thing, he said it on his story. He was like, dude, you know, Michael B. Jordan's is a prince, but he's running game like a peasant. Like, he's, he's not playing the game well. Again, life's a game. Yeah. So he was playing his relationship game like a piece of shit. Like yeah. a, you know, or like a like a freaking level one player, even See, though he's a level 99 whatever yeah. potential, right? And that's the problem is that the people that are putting in most of the effort don't notice that they're doing it. And Love's a crazy thing, it's huh? It's scary. And it's yeah, a scary train to be on when you don't know what you're t- it's happening. And... Like, this is all part of the game. This is just one of the games. One of the like, games. Everything is a game. It yeah, really is. But we're talking about the relationship the game. The relationship game. Yeah. And the relationship game is a huge part of society. I feel like that's like the most challenging one, huh? It is one of the most challenging. It, it is, is one of them. It is one of, if not the most, huh? It is. And if you don't conquer it and you don't respect it. And learn you don't to get good at it. Learn to enjoy it. Uh. Then you will not be able to fulfill that part of you and that piece of you you'll be you'll be constantly either repeating the same level or you'll just take yourself out of the game completely yeah and they're both really shitty like if you're ha- if you have a shitty experience with a girl and you go on a date with her and something happened during the date don't be like oh fuck this bitch and then walk away analyze the situation and sit with her and be like hey like what can i do that I did wrong. Like, I'll give you an example. I was dating this guy at one point, like, before Nate. I was dating this guy. He was, like, co- consistently, like, he, he was, like, as if he had a script written in his head 24-7. That's of fucking what, weird. Of what to say. That's weird. I know. That's well, really weird. Say. That's, like, sociopath shit. It is. It's scary. It was weird. It's, like, this fake plastic thing. You're and like, I didn't oh, know. Yeah. Weird. I didn't know until a couple months in. I wonder if he was doing some of that, like, pickup artist shit. You know what I mean? Like, the NLP, like, dating. No, it was this, it was this, it was this piece of him that was, like, I have to be nice to somebody 24-7. And I have to be very oh. nice. And, like, I have to, like, say all the right things and do all the, as if it's an interview. 
and I was like, and I and I couldn't handle like, it. Like, bro, are you real? Like, yeah. stop! Like, I, I know you're yeah, fake. This is, this is weird. This is weird. Like, away. dude, just talk to me. Like, relax. Yeah, man. I was like, dude, come on. And then he, I, I, and I didn't get it. And I just, I ended it. And I told him, I was like, listen, like, I dude, just did he freak out and get all stalker and shit? Because no, that's kind of how but shit. I've pro- had, I've had that. Because, because that's what I feel like a dude like that's how stalker shit happens. Thank probably. Thank God he didn't. But there are guys like that. And I've had, I've had experience. And that's why women have to have their fucking guard that's up, dude. That's why women are bitches, and that's why we are so picky. Because there's and so many clueless dudes. Because guys, because listen. They're fucking clueless, like, man. It, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. What's that Netflix show, the yeah. Israeli guy who, like, who goes on Hinge or Tinder and, like, gets all these girls? I can't remember. Tinder Swindler. Oh, okay. I never watched it, but I heard everything about Dude, it. Yeah. That's why women are so scared all the time. And then guys are like, oh, she's just like so afraid. Like, I don't know what to do with her. Like, dude, it's because of the guys like Tinder Swindler that legitimately go into our lives, destroy our lives, and then leave. It's not cool. So, yeah. anyways, going back to the fucking guy yeah. I, I, it does go I, both I, I, ways though huh. it does go both and girls do it girls too girls do it too it's people so men and women do yeah. it yeah and I, sorry I said men. it's no, true but, but, girls and yeah. fucking guys yeah, it's and I know people. a lot of girls that do it and I and I know them from experience yeah they're such assholes like they could be such assholes hi baby they're like you lose yeah, yeah they're like use a dude for all the shit and then bounce and like yeah. fuck a guy over and then his mind's all fucked up yeah. And it's fucked up because like that's... Like, a good example is a gold yeah. digger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the same shit. Like, um... Yeah, man. Dude, this guy... I mean, I told him, I was like... I, we ended it, and I was like... He's like, I don't know what I did wrong. And I'm like, listen, like... Whoa! Everything you say out loud, it sounds like you are you have it prepared. It's weird. Like, and I, I hear it. Like, I hear you saying, like... Everything you say, even on text messages, like, it's just, like, fully prepared. And I noticed it after a couple months. It was, like, he would answer everything I say the same thing. And I'm, like, okay. Like, nothing's changed. Nothing's different. He's not being his true self. This is not a human being. This is a robot. It's a fucking robot. And then he's, like, you know what's weird? He goes, every girl I've dated has said that. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, and then I'm like, dude, this well, is a fucking sign. Maybe you should come on, switch bro. it. To. So that's part of the game, too, is like, if someone tells you something, and he should have just known it from the beginning. If someone tells you something from a long time ago, and you're still doing it, and you're repeating the fucking same thing over and over again, and you know you're doing it, why don't you take a break, step back, reanalyze the situations that you've been through, and correct and adjust so you can play the game better and you can level up but but here's and so this leads into really i think what all of this shit is about about the podcast about youtube all these things that it all goes back to like personal development and what we were talking about uh either before just chatting or maybe on the podcast i can't even fucking remember but um the point is it's about the programming It's about we're programmed so people are afraid to be who they really are Mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily know how to better themselves or move forward because they're asleep, they're unconscious. This is just how they operate because they've been programmed to operate that. So they really are like fucking robots. And until you have this like either really painful experience or like really amazing opportunity and experience, people really are asleep. They don't fucking wake up. They're fucking robots. You're robots. You don't, a lot of people just don't even realize that they're being robots and they're basically just living out a life that they were told to live and it's not necessarily what they truly want. Yeah. And like, so I, I've, I've experienced this personally with so many of my uh, friend groups and, and, you know, because what's the, what's the thing that every parent tells them except for now in this new age is completely different because we're shifting into a new into 5d consciousness but that's another story but the old programming you fucking you go to school you got to get good grades you got to find a good job fucking college. you go to college you got to find a guy a man or a woman who has a good job and you get married, married and you have kids, kids and you buy a house and you fucking do this and the like, funny thing is is how many of my friends 
close now that I know for a fact that's not what they fucking wanted, but they followed the program. And some of them, yes, they're making the most of it, and they may not even still realize that they're just going along with the program, but a lot of people aren't fucking happy, and they follow this program, and it is until they get cheated on by their spouse and after they have three fucking kids and they get a divorce, or they lose their job, or whatever, that they don't their life comes down in shambles because they go, fuck, I didn't want any of this shit in the first place. Yeah. I was just following the fucking program. That's exactly what happened to me. I was following the program... And I got cheated on. I got, like, fucked over. My, I mean, this is, like... You do all these jobs you you never want to fucking do. Yeah, if you want to get real, I was seeing somebody, and he passed away from suicide. And that was a fucking reality check for me. That was your awakening moment. It was. That was was your awakening. I'm doing the same thing with... Every like every aspect of my life over and over again because I was told that's what I what do you mean the same doing. what do you mean the same thing like I was just repeating my day to day wake up eat breakfast go to work go to sleep go to the gym in the morning wake like it was the same thing over and over again but and you were and you I happy wasn't, I wasn't happy but you were trained to think that you should be happy by doing because that all huh? I was trained to be like. You should be thankful. Like mm. you have a you have a beautiful home. You have like a f- family that loves you. You have all this stuff, and I'm like, yes, I have things. I have materialistic things. I have a lot of things, but those things I'm not happy. Don't do anything. I'm not fucking happy. They do things, but they don't do the one thing that truly makes you happy, which is. <laughs> Your heart and your soul and your passion and what you really enjoy in life. Yes. And that's what it's about. Yeah, man. It, it's about finding what... So, it's funny. Um, have you ever listened to or read any of... Heard of a guy named uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer? Yeah. You got, I'll start sending you a bunch of his shit. Okay. And for those of you guys who are listening, um, he has moved on to the next life now. Uh, most amazing, fucking awesome, like, personal development, spiritual being who, you know, is in the self-help personal development, spiritual category. Anyways, he always talks about it, or he, one of his most important things is you have to learn to be free from the good opinions of other people. You have, have to, to learn, learn to be free, free from the good opinions of other people. From the good opinions. So other people wow. think they know what's best for you. It's their good opinion, i.e. your parents for all of us. And they're yeah. telling you what they think is right for you because this is what, because they're doing the best they fucking can. So they're trying to teach you because they care and love about you. But it doesn't mean that their good opinion is the right opinion for you. Yeah. And the reality is what we need is a safe space as children and people to develop into who we truly are and be accepted unconditionally. But that's not it because what happens or has happened in the past is these old fucking ancient beliefs and systems of like teaching our young and stuff that you should do this because this is what I've learned in my life so I know it's the same thing for you. Well, it's not because we're not the same fucking people and it's not the same time and it's not the same situation. So it's Dude, not fucking every right Every day for me. you're a different person. Every day. Every day you are a new person. Well, no, you're, you're not. not. Look. Most people are the same fucking person, and that's why they're miserable. Yes. Because they're not learning to be a new person. Yes. They're not learning to be who yes. the new person is. Because, they, again, they've been programmed to fucking be a robot and go through the work and the job. And then they're married with kids. And now they're in this situation that they didn't even fucking want. And that's they why they're didn't. not happy. I know so many people with the most beautiful children, the most beautiful lives. And they have money and, and a house. Have, they're and millionaires. They fucking, yeah, like, they have... And they, and they just like walk around like zombies and they're fu- zombies they're, and depressed and, they, and I'm like what the fuck like go change your life like this is not how life should be like don't I'm not telling anybody what life should be everybody's life should be the way they want it to be but go do but what you point. want it to do but that's the point exactly yeah, like, <laughs> yeah no you're not, you don't know what the fuck is best for other people but you're saying go and find that for yourself yes. because you yeah, and that's why, and it's funny because, like... That's part of the game. And then, like, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, especially if you're single or you're not married, or maybe you're, like, you know, I feel... The first example that comes to mind is, like, 
a woman in her 30s and 40s who's like single or not married or doesn't have kids and she feels like a piece of shit like she's failing at life no fuck that the reason you feel like that is because people are telling you that you should be married and have kids because all Yo, your other friends and have kids that's exactly why that most women are depressed at that age yeah is because no. they have this 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 like story that people put into their brain no it's fucking bullshit if that's not what you want it then it's not what that's you what want they or, want or if that if that's not what you have okay but is that what you really want or are you just allowing the good opinions of other people that you should have kids and be married affecting you negatively that's yeah. what it's about if you don't fucking want that fuck you fuck them dude don't and i'm a little extreme with this shit i get it like i actually need to come back to the other side of like a little more compassion and stuff because i'm pretty extreme like fuck you i don't care like bounce i don't care i'm good with myself yeah um but yeah, uh you do, you do have that i i'm like a little i'm almost like extreme on the other side like i don't give a fuck later like i don't give a shit because i that's what you did i'm comfortable walking alone yeah oh i'm comfortable being completely alone and i always have been yeah yeah you grew to learn that comfort oh man i always have been alone and what i or i haven't of course i have people around me but i've realized like that i'm always so fucking different and i know that and i always thought it was this like curse and now i realize it's actually my greatest gift and this is why my life purpose is this, which is being free from the good opinions of other people. And I've had to learn to walk alone to teach people how to be alone because that's the other part of it too, is the mob mentality that people are afraid to be alone because growing into who you really are, who you really want, what you have to understand is that the old you is dead. So a lot of those old yeah. relationships are gone. And a that's lot of the, okay. and and then all this li- your life was filled with all these people who you thought were your friends and no you're just going along with the program and the group and then being alone you're sitting in your apartment you're alone you're like whoa what the fuck am I doing but this is what having a spiritual awakening is about and then you come to terms with I'm not lonely I'm actually transforming and I'm leaving behind the old me but again many people don't want to do that because the programming has been from the beginning of time the pack mentality if I leave the pack or go outside the cave I'm going to fucking starve. I'm going to die. I'm going to get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger or whatever the fuck it is. So that's why we feel that we have to be in pack because we're literally hardwired in our bodies and our DNA that we have to be together. And there is a sense of that, but now this is a different time. This is something completely different. I have the same struggle too. Yeah, everyone does. And until you learn to be like, oh, I'm not alone. And then you, the real power is when you learn to be happy on your own and it's fucking beautiful. But this is why so many people get in relationships they don't want to do because they don't take the time to yes. heal and know themselves. They get and they into hop, relationships they hop right they back that's in. My path. And that's I'll be happy when I'm fucking with someone else. But they really realize what they don't realize is that no, you're not happy because you don't know yourself. You don't know what the fuck you want or who you are. So you're repeating the same cycle and yeah. you get in these relationships. Yeah. I have a very specific friend in mind. I'm not going to say his name. But it's like I've watched this shit for like 15 years in a row and all of our friends watch the same fucking thing. You probably know who I'm talking about, but I'm not obviously I'm not going to say his name, but that's the fucking epitome of repeating the same cycle and being fucking extremely miserable and then just trying to, you know, drown the pain and numb actually doing the work with drugs and partying and fucking events and more people and more friends and more girls and all this shit and it's like no you need you to fucking be alone everything you, about who what you, you are you don't know what the fuck you, you want are, or who you want you don't know you, want. you don't know what you want or who you want because you don't know who the fuck you are because you're just running on everyone else's programs you lose everything and you're about exhausted yourself. you're exhausted all and you're miserable time. and you're tired and you're tired and you're sad you're drained oh it's terrible it's the worst and i've done it and i know i've done it mm-hmm. and i have and i'm sure i i i'm guilty of it too i fucking everyone is, yeah. everyone's yeah i shouldn't say everyone but yeah we'll speak for ourselves i i've done it i used to after my ex passed i was like all party all not give a fuck mm-hmm. and then i met nate and it was like Oh, there are oh, other... And then COVID yeah. hit. Yeah. And we were stuck in quarantine together. We weren't stuck. That's a bad word. We were enjoying we, quarantine we're, together. Yeah, there you go. And... Look at I, that. You're all aware yeah. of the shit, right? Yeah. It's fucking awesome, right? It's great. 
Yeah. Man, that's another whole episode is about the things we say to ourselves, yeah. this talk and shit. Because mm-hmm. our self-talk is everything and what we say. We'll talk about it next time. Yeah, yeah. but go, go ahead, go ahead. Can, so, yeah. I was doing shit. that. I was doing it because I needed to get away and I was running away from the life I was living. And then I realized, you know what? Like, I don't need to run. I need to embrace. There's a huge difference. And I... I... I loved the part where I sat down and got to know myself. After he passed, I was journaling 24-7. I went to a coffee shop, woke up at 6 a.m., went to a coffee shop, left at 6, went to the gym, went back home, knocked out for a couple hours, went back to the fucking coffee shop, writing, writing. I have like maybe hundreds of journals full of just writing Mm. to myself because I never knew who I was. And that's what destroys people is that they just numb the pain, forget who they were, don't even talk to themselves to get to know who they are, and then they're just depressed. And that's what our culture and society, and that's a whole other thing, that's what our culture, society, shadow government, all that shit wants to have you do is just to be inundated with so information there's no space to explore who you really are. That's what they want. It's just control, it's more social media, it's more news, it's more fucking drugs it's more events it's more concerts it's more sports it's more money it's more business it's more and you're just fucking distracted and you never slow down then you never find your happiness but that's how you are under the system of control and living under their program and you never get to true truly figure out who you are yeah um you down to get real for a second yeah of course you are sure yeah okay i always like to ask permission so my question for you is all that journaling do you feel like you're at peace with your ex and you've forgiven yourself and you've let go of a lot all the anger and the sadness and the grief of the situation yeah but it took a long time awesome it took it took two years like you forgave him you've forgiven yourself you've worked through the, the sadness you've worked through the anger you've worked through all that shit with that situation it took a long time but i did it beautiful because the reason i ask is because now uh something that came to mind to like share with you if you hadn't but even more so still i'll share it now because i think it if you hadn't looked at it this way the thing that came to mind was like now can you not only be at peace with what happened and all the sadness and all the emotions and stuff and actually be grateful for the for the gift that he gave you because now that was what woke you up that, that event up. is what woke you up and has gifted you with the life and the direction that you're going now. I would say it was a beautiful spiritual guidance. Mm. And it was it was a big slap in the face to wake up out of the reality that I was living in. Mm. So, yes. What a fucking the gift, gift, right? Wow. The gift of that is not something I, I could even repay even if he was here. Right. It's like, Man. it's just... Something, all I have to say is don't wait for that something to happen to, for it to click in. And if you need that to happen for it to click in, then that's okay too. And everybody learns their own way. But if you know right now there's a possibility within your heart and your soul that you could surpass your your present time and that you're locked in and you feel you're lock, locked in and you're stuck, if you can pass it and you can jump to the next level without anything crazy attacking you or crazy happening to slap you out of the moment then do it and if you have the ability to do it then do it you just need to be confident in yourself enough to know that you can and for me it was that i wasn't i wasn't confident enough to know that i could do it and i knew i knew that there that within my heart and my soul that if i just believed in myself enough and i had a surrounding of love and support and grind and do whatever the fuck you want to do without anybody else's opinions like i know for a fact like i would have done it but that's okay that was that's like i'm not gonna go backwards now like everything happened for a reason and i'm here for a reason all I'm saying is like whoever is listening to this if you know you can do that for yourself then do it and do whatever you can to do that for yourself because you 
deserve it. And every person in this fucking world deserves everything that they want. Absolutely. And yeah. that's a huge, another problem. And I'd love to discuss that later. If like we get to the next episodes is that, well, we will, but you're like catching yourself now. It's yeah. so funny with what you're saying. Yeah. huh? <laughs> you're like, know. I was like, if I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah. If I'm like, what does that mean? I'm, I'm and you're, just, you're so much more conscious of like what, what you're saying and shit, <laughs> yeah. huh? It's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we'll talk about this another time. Self talk. And, um, what we were just talking about as well but for fucking it's the most amazing thing to gift yourself the same things you, you love and respect you give to the people that you love and you adore give to yourself like you deserve it and that's the thing that people think that they don't and i want to do a podcast on that is right write it down it. for some like a topic that you want to talk about later so make a note. i'm gonna we're, I'm gonna watch oh. all our all our shit because there's okay. so many things that we've talked about. Yeah, they're always that, and no matter what I wrote, I remember I was writing, 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 and no yeah. matter what I wrote down, it just kept coming out. So I'm gonna keep after this. I'm gonna watch this <laughs> video and we're gonna take all this material and expand on it. That, well, that's and that's that's what we were saying like in the car the other day. That's what I felt when you were when you were like, oh, should yes. I feel like I should record this? And I was like, you can if you want to. But it doesn't matter. I was like, that's, I was like, it doesn't fucking matter yeah. as well. I was like, when you get into this space. We of, were in the car and I was like, I was hearing what we were talking about and it was really enjoyable and I thought people would he- love to listen to it and I was like wanting to record it. This is what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. She wanted to record. She's like, should I record this? And I was like, if you want to. And the feeling I, the, what I was sensing, the energy she was giving me was like, I feel like I should record this because it's so good and I don't want to miss it. And like, I don't want to like not like, in other words, like, oh, I want, are we going to run out of content? This is so good. We should record it. It's like what I felt. And when I was like, and when I told her, I was like, we can, if you want to like pull out your phone and do it. But what I told her, it was like, now that once you get in the space of like creation, that shit's unlimited. It's unlimited and it never stops. Yeah. And every time you open up in this space and this energy, more shit comes and it never stops and it never will. Yeah. It's 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 infinite and it's that is what abundance is. And, and then we we're live also going to talk about how everybody else has this ability to verbalize, but they weren't given the space to do so. No. Well, you have to speak for yourself. Well, that's something I feel. Yeah. Because right. Like so and that's something that um, I want to bring up to you also as we go forward. A lot of the time, and this is something that I got from that MITT course, you'll, a lot of the time you go, oh, we do this, and you do this, and you do this. Start saying it from oh, I, because it's only you. And yeah. that's why I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I'm like, that's not how I feel. Yeah. I'm like, so that's not how I feel, you're so right. say it for you, because you're speaking for yourself. Yeah. Or like, you, and you, and you. It's not you, because you're... It doesn't I matter do who's listening. I do that okay. a lot. And that's okay. Most people do. Yeah. That's why I'm bringing it up. Do. So now watch. You'll, you're going to start catching it and be mindful. Always come from I. Dude, Nate always points it out. He's like, he's like, you. You. He's like, you. And Not I'm like, me. Yes, you're right. I right. just, I'm so used to, it's like engraved and I'm so used to saying it. Like, that's everyone, the programming. Everyone, everyone, us, us, we, we. No. And it's, it's not. You. It's and your it's experience. And then, yeah. That's, and so good. So, in, obviously, we want, he put the one that signed me up for the fucking course. <laughs> but, anyways. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah. yeah. So, but, anyways, they bring that to your awareness. Um, in the course and it's a beautiful thing and now that's why I always only come from I because I'm like I don't know what the fuck's best for you I'm not going to speak for you I don't know yeah you know but so I it's cool because in the beginning I was like I should have said it earlier because in the beginning when we very first I was feeling all this resistance and I was like whoa what's this we shit I'm like this is your experience yeah. you're speaking for you yeah. I should have said it you but, but, but it's now, okay. but it's okay because now we're doing. I didn't notice doing, it. I didn't notice it. And now, now we're talking. Now so we're now, watch. You're gonna be super aware of it. Yeah. Um. But but rewinding in a second, something important that I wanted to say, uh, that I was sitting there and it's still very present. So, a lot of the time, the spiritual awakening, or many times in my experience, and see, I'm seeing like in my experience and what I have perceived and experienced with many others who have a spiritual awakening. It often comes from a traumatic event. We'd love it to come from this amazing loving event. Maybe you fucking are on LSD with like a great group of people and you meet an amazing girl or a guy and they fucking, then your mind opens up because you have this, and I hope that happens for everyone. But sometimes it's a traumatic experience like a suicide or a fucking, an abandonment or like a, a big 
bad toxic breakup or something fucking gnarly or you know some woman runs off with your money or some dude cheats on you with another girl and leaves you with two kids right it's yeah. oftentimes it's a super painful traumatic experience that wakes you up in your reality and what you were saying was like but if you know but you don't have to wait for that moment or something in order to have your awakening and so the, what i was going to offer to people is what we were talking about earlier about we have this guidance system called our heart and we just have to listen to it mm-hmm. and the only question you have to fucking ask yourself is am i happy and it's a very simple fucking question. It's a so yes. Simple. It's a yes or no fucking question. So simple. But but the 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 challenge is, can I shut off my mind and what my ego wants to say? And yeah, but yeah, uh, no, I'm unhappy. But I have this and this and this because that's your fucking programming. If you are not unhappy, or if you are not happy, that it's just as simple as that. Do you love your job? Does it feel like work, or does it feel like a grind and drain? You fucking dread going to. Well, then that's not what you should fucking be doing. No. Um, do you love your relationship or do you love your partner? Are they someone that you are growing with or are you on different fucking levels? No, that's not the fucking right relationship. So it's very simple. You, it's very simple. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to do, but, but it's, it's the not. most freeing and best thing you're doing. So if you haven't the had this traumatic, step is to do that. It's not, it's not, you don't have to have this traumatic experience. Many have and will. And that's where my awakening has come from. Yes and no, I guess. But I feel like I've had a bunch of levels of awakening. Like, I've already experienced the dark night of the soul and all that. That's what you... You met me when I was going through something called the dark night of the soul. That's when you met me when I was on the edge of I've suicide. I've never heard of the dark night of the soul. We'll talk about the dark night of the soul. Okay. It's basically... We'll do, like, it, a, a session. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of shit out there. And if you're listening now, dude, just Google or go on YouTube and talk. go to dark night of the soul or whatever on podcast. It's, a, it's not a... It's not a fucking uncommon thing. And if you're listening and you're hearing me and that's resonating with you, it's for a reason. It's probably because within the next amount of time going forward, you are ready to experience your dark night of the soul. It's basically like the darkest before the dawn, right? The darkest so, like, before the dawn. I like that. That's what it is. And that's what you. That's when you met me when I was at the darkest mm-hmm. before all of this. But I had like levels of my awakening. It was interesting. And I still am. I know that there's more, more shit to come. Like... I'm playing the game, dude. I'm only fucking 37. There's a lot of life and There's a lot of... There's so much. Oh, dude, the shit that we're going to do in our lives now, I, I mean, fuck, retarded. we've already talked about it. Like, it already feels real. It's already happening. We're doing it right now. We've been doing it. We're, we're doing it right now. With the podcast and the, yeah. and the next thing you know, we're going to be in fucking, like, Spain and Nate's going to be doing spinning for a concert. We have so many things that we, like, have already manifested. It's already there. We already we're manifested. We're it. We already talked about... It's already there. Like, for even for Nate, like he, man, we've manifested. He's manifested so much, and it's amazing. We've like seen that, it. it's wild. We only have like a couple minutes left. I won't what go on my hour. on the space? Or what? Oh no, well, we, whatever. But um, I also you have to use the bathroom. Okay. So, okay. But it's cool. We have a couple minutes. I can wait. Okay. Um, well, whatever. If you want to pause yeah, it, we, we can fucking pause it too. No, no, no it's cool. Okay. okay yeah. So we've manifested a lot, dude. That's your bathroom thing, though. Remember? No, but this is oh, different. This, this isn't is about different. asking. This isn't but there about is asking. something we have to talk about. Yeah, and this is this isn't different. about the asking for permission thing. It's like, no, I want to do this. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I can hold it because I want to do it. I had a bad experience of going to the bathroom. Um, I had to go to the bathroom with a teacher. I'll tell you guys later. But yeah. Long and that's, story short, <laughs> and it, an episode about that too is about is about trauma because yeah. that's like that's like. I don't want to say a micro trauma because I don't want to downplay it, but like, yes, there are, everyone's trauma, everyone's trauma is different. it's different, but it's still a trauma, but yeah. whether how, how much pain that traumatic experience is, unless we release it and overcome it, that's how it fucking comes out yeah. in weird shit like that. Yeah. When we're at a festival and you're afraid to go to the fucking bathroom because yeah. of that experience. Yeah. And that's what happens in people's lives in so many different ways. Or you never ask that girl out because that one time you asked her out in fourth or in sixth grade, you got fucking humiliated by the school. So now whatever yes. for the rest of your life, this dude is scared to ask girls out because yes. he got rejected. That, those are traumas. Those are traumas. And it's about healing and shit. Yeah. And so there's, that's a whole other thing to talk about. Yeah, but, um, I'm excited to talk about that. But, actually. um... Yeah. But the, the, I guess the thing that I'm feeling the need and the importance of reiterating is it's very simple. Just ask yourself, am I happy? That's the game. That's the trick of the game. That's the game. And then, that's the game itself. Like, but to even be real with you're... yourself, though, yes. you have to be real and honest. And it's not about justifying yes. because this is how it should be. And this is what I've done. I've noticed when I life coach people. 
is I'll ask him a question and I'll ask him a very simple yes or no question, black and white. And a lot of the time, they won't even say yes or no. They'll, They'll immediately it. start to fucking justify it or talk about it. I'm like, I didn't ask any of that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm just asking a yes or no answer because what's happening is their ego is trying to fucking automatically tell me how I'm wrong and shit, but I'm not trying to be right. I'm just asking them a question. They're immediately trying to justify their situation because yeah. they don't want to be honest with themselves because the truth hurts, as they say. And also, the truth will set you free. But many people don't want to go to the truth because that's the painful shit. And their ego is trying to protect them and they haven't woken up out of their ego yet to start healing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's awesome that's shit. It's amazing how like people, when you ask somebody a question... And it's a very simple answer, yes or no. It's like, are you happy with your relationship? Even though they spend an hour telling you and how they're they go, not. They go, well, well, they're really cool. And, and then it's like, this and it's like bro, you just fucking told me for an hour why you're not happy when and I ask you, you and just, call you and out. And then it's a no, and, obviously. And then you're you trying to justify no. why yes you are, and you just told me no. You got to be real with yourself, and yeah. that's what most people don't want to do. Yeah. And that's why there's very few people who fucking live the life that they want. And that's why. People aren't following the game and the rules of the game. There are no rules. It is just following your heart. No, they're playing They're playing society's game. They're playing everyone else's game. And, and they're playing everyone they're else's not, game. They're not fucking learning to say, fuck that game. I don't want to play that game. And yeah, learning play to play your their own, own game. game. Play your own game. There you go. So that's what this is about. That will be the name of this episode. Play your own game. Play your own game. Yeah. So it's about <laughs> playing games. So... Yeah. yeah, we're okay. Cool. You gotta go pee, and we're just <laughs> we're about an there. hour, so it seems like a good place to stop. And yeah. then zero one zero one. Oh a, look at that! Is a synchronicity he knows always. The numbers. There you are. You do too. I'm learning. Yes, I'm learning. you know them too. I'm learning. You're learning, but you know enough to be like, oh shit, you're starting to see them. I'm starting to see. And we'll do another episode, episode about that. angel numbers, synchronicity, yeah. shit like that. It just means you're in alignment. But yeah, this is a perfect place to stop. Then. Yeah. So. All right. Awesome. Thank you for listening Thank and watching. You. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. For You're listening. the best. Uh, well, I guess. Hugs and drugs. Hugs and drugs. <laughs> um, my Instagram stuff for fitness. If you guys want fitness content, is Pierce at Pierce underscore Fit Coach, and then hers is. At Izzy Levy. It's just I Z Y L E V I. And then what we'll do is when we post this stuff too, we'll put like our emails if you have like questions yeah, individually you guys or whatever. Can DM us, and then I guess we'll have to make like a group email or something. Yeah. Like people will email hugs and drugs or whatever the fuck yes. our thing is. We'll do yeah, we'll figure that. it out. That'd what what another episode we'll have to do, and I've already talked a bunch about it, is the perfectionism. We just started She's like, I want to do a podcast. I'm like, she's, she already has the fucking mic. I'm like, I've already done one before. I'm like, w- let's we're just fucking do it. Just do it. So that's start something it. like people don't start on what they want to do and they overthink shit. And that was that's my thing we're gonna talk about. And I just did a post that literally today the my post on my YouTube channel is how to stop overthinking. So my YouTube channel is Pierce Dattweiler. It's just my oh, name. There you go. So, but yeah, check so, that one out. Do that one on top of this shit. But yeah, it's all the things, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Go check out uh, Pierce's YouTube. He has some good shit on there. He also has really great advice on his Instagram. Um, and I'm excited to continue more. Yeah. Uh, let That's us know awesome. if you guys need us. And uh, have a beautiful day. Yay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank Love you. you. Bye.